you're flying on your back, I am getting comfortable. Take a nice deep breath and a slow exhale. And then focus on the toes. Imagine you're gripping a pencil with the toes. Grip it nice and tight. Feel the tension. And relax. Let it go. Curl your feet up towards your knees. Feel the tension in your shins and the stretch in your calves. And relax and let it go. Push the back of the knees down into the mat. Feel the tension in your thighs. And relax and let it go. Push the small of the back down into the mat. Pull in your stomach. Feel the tension all around the abdomen. Inhale. And on a nice slow exhale, relax all the muscles in the abdomen. Notice the difference. Make fists with your hands and feel the tension in your fists and your wrists and your forearms. And relax and let that tension drain away. Pull your shoulders up towards your ears and feel the tension all around the neck and the shoulders. And relax the shoulders down again, noticing the difference. And finally, clench your jaw. Feel a tension in the jaw. And relax and let it go. And then just ease yourself up into a sitting position for our breathing routine. And we're going to do the breath of fire. So if you have any problems with the abdomen, if you have heart problems or a pacemaker, or if you have glaucoma, um, avoid the breath of fire. And your alternatives are to breathe in for a count of six, and breathe out for a count of four. Inhaling stimulates the sympathetic system. So early in the morning, it's great for getting the system going. It's better than a cup of tea or a cup of um, caffeinated coffee. It's better for the system. But um, you can do that, or you can do top triangle, if you remember top triangle, where you inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, or inhale for six, hold for six, exhale for six. All these are movements towards the fight or flight, the sympathetic nervous system, getting the body cheered up. Not the kind of thing you want to do, obviously, in the evening before you go to bed. It's just the opposite. Okay. So breath of fire, just to remind you, and I'll turn sideways on, it's rapid exhale and then a, just a natural release to let the abdomen suck the air in as, you, as it comes out again. So it's that. That kind of rapid explosive exhale. So um, I'll do three rounds of 15. Uh, Anna, you will do top triangle. You'll do top triangle. So if you watch and doing the inhale for four, or you can do your own six if you want. Inhale, hold, and exhale out again. Okay. So start by just taking a nice, slow, deep inhale. Exhale fully. Inhale halfway. And exhale, 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 
exhale, exhale, exhale, exhale, exhale, exhale, exhale, exhale, exhale, exhale, exhale, and relax. Breathe normally. Tune in with how your body feels. So it's always important to just take that break, whether you're doing a set of 15 or a set of 20. Just take a moment in between the sets. And then you might decide, no, I'll change to top triangle or just the longer inhale than the exhale. See how you feel. And then, if you're ready for another set, take a full inhale and a slow exhale. Inhale halfway and exhale, 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 exhale. Exhale, 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 and exhale. And breathe normal. And again, just tune in with your body, with your mind, with how you feel after that. Make a conscious decision whether you want to repeat the breath of fire or maybe change to the longer inhale than exhale or the top triangle. And then we'll do our third and final set of breath of fire. So, Nice, slow inhale, full inhale. And I'm going to join you this time, so exhale. Inhale halfway. And Again, evaluating for yourself what that has done for your system. And then let's do some gentle warm-ups. So just ease the arms out to the side, pulling the hands to a position where the fingers are straight, the shoulders are low, and stretched out and then drop your head to the right side and just roll the head forwards chin onto chest and then slowly roll it back again so we're just rolling the head up and down the right side You're feeling the stretch of the muscles on the left side of the neck. And then bring the chin down to the chest and roll up on the left side, keeping the right shoulder stretched out, relaxed, but Stretch going through to the fingers, not a, not a straining stretch, just a nice relaxed stretch. Kind of stretch you might do when you're waking up in the morning. Kind of stretch you see animals doing when they get up from a rest.
Okay. And then let's do a bit of protraction and retraction. So we stretch the arms out, protraction, and retract the shoulders back, feeling the shoulder blades coming together. So pushing the arms out and pulling back. Exhaling out and inhaling as we pull the shoulders back. Okay, and then we can bring the hands to the collarbones and bring the elbows together in front of the chest. Inhale, bringing the elbows out to the side and exhale, bringing the elbows together again. And big circles with the elbows. And then big circles in the opposite direction. Last one. Okay. And then we can bring the hands out in front of us. Inhale the hands towards us. Exhale the hands forwards, pulling the stomach in. Inhale the hands overhead. And then exhale, pulling the stomach in. Bending forwards. Inhale up, bringing the chest forward, filling the lungs. Exhale forwards, curving the back. Inhale up and exhale down. Last one, inhale up and then exhale, bringing the hands out to the sides, resting on the left forearm, stretching the right arm, getting a nice enjoyable stretch, not a straining stretch, a nice enjoyable stretch down the right side. And then on an exhale, Leaning out in the direction of that left thigh bone. So you're just bringing the spine in the same direction as the left thigh. And we're relaxing into the pose. We're not straining to get low. We're just relaxing. Just enjoying the stretch. And we come back onto the left forearm, stretching the right side again, and back up to centre. We lean back on our hands and swap the legs over to balance, and then come down onto the right forearm, stretch the left side. Again, a nice, enjoyable stretch. And then stretching out over the right thigh. Noticing areas of resistance. So for me, on the right side, I can feel an area of resistance along my thigh. It might be your knee joint, or your hip joint, or the small of your back. You're just giving mental awareness to that point and not fighting it not straining with it relaxing it being gentle with it being gentle with yourself coming back onto the right forearm stretching the left side and coming into a vertical position before swiveling round to come into our cat cow position so, from cat-cow, we can exhale, arching the back, and then inhale, dropping the hips, following with the stomach, looking straight ahead. 
and exhale back down again. And just enjoying that at your own speed, coordinating the movement and the breath together. So then we can do a few looking over the shoulder movements. So if we look over the left shoulder for the right heel, look over the right shoulder for the left heel, just gently swaying from side to side. But I say looking over so that we're involving the neck vertebrae as well. And then we can do a few spinal twists. So we bring the left hand into the central position of the mat and inhale the right arm up, exhale bringing it down and round, coming down briefly onto the shoulder so instead of holding the pose we'll go back into an inhale and stretch and exhale down onto the shoulder, inhale up and last one exhale down onto the shoulder and then back into tabletop before putting the right hand in the center and inhaling the left hand up towards the ceiling, exhaling down onto the shoulder and twice more. And then we can come back into tabletop and sink back onto our heels, coming into child's pose. We can stop and take a rest at this point, or we can inhale back up into tabletop, and exhale back down into extended child. Or we can take it a stage further, we can tuck the toes underneath, Move the hands a little bit further forward and then come up into our downward facing dog. So we're pushing down through the fingers, pushing down through the palms. We can, if you want, bend one knee and then the other. So we'll be doing some plank work later, so we won't do the other options of swinging through into upward facing dog, or high plank, low plank, and upward facing dog. We'll walk the feet to the hands and come into our um, rag doll. So the knees are bent, we can fold the arms, we can dangle if you like and just gently sway from side to side, releasing any tensions in the side muscles of the back there, nodding the head and shaking the head, releasing any tension around the neck, and taking a few deep breaths. Really enjoy the exhale, really enjoy letting go. And then we can uncurl nice and slowly, coming up into a position ready for Banana asana, and normally we do banana asana after we come out of our relaxation and we're doing it lying on our back. But today we're going to do it standing so you can do it in a similar way that we do the um, Qigong movement, the um, bending for the spine. So we can inhale the palms up and palms up towards the ceiling. 
inhale and then exhale to one side, enjoying that stretch in the same way as I say that you see animals enjoying a stretch and then over to the other side. So instead of just doing one side at a time, exhale to one side, inhale back up and then exhale to the other side and inhale back up. That kind of lazy, wakening up, enjoying the stretch. Settling the body nicely. And finding it an automatic thing. To just exhale and enjoy the stretch. Inhale back up. Exhale and enjoy the stretch to the other side. And inhale back up. And once more to each side. Okay, and then from there, we'll bring the arms down. And we're going to go into the warrior poses. So we'll start off with warrior one. Warrior one, we have the left foot out, we have the knee directly above the ankle or slightly behind it. We have a nice wide stance. The back foot can be at anything from 40 to 90 degrees if you're doing the traditional way of warrior one. The other alternative, you're doing the traditional way, aren't you? The other way is to bring the foot round so that there's less strain on that right hip joint there. And then we inhale both arms up and we look slightly up. And again, it's a nice, enjoyable stretch with the fingers stretching up towards the ceiling. A gentle back bend. And four or five breaths. Okay, we can come out of that and into Warrior Two. So if you are up on the toes and the ball of the foot like me, just swing the foot round. And then two arms, just checking that the back arm is parallel with the floor. Focusing your eyes on the fingernail of the middle finger of the left hand. And that's your drishti point. Remember the legs are powerful, they're pushing out. You are strengthening the muscles in the legs and you're providing that good, strong, stable base. Four or five nice, steady, slow breaths, calm breaths. And then we go into reverse warrior. So we turn the palm of the leading hand up towards the ceiling and just bring it back into another nice stretch. The right hand comes to rest on the side of the right thigh and you're feeling that nice stretch down the left side for four or five breaths. And then we're coming out of that and come back into a mountain pose for our um, warrior three. So the warrior three pose, we're going to dip into and out of it. I'll just remind you what warrior three pose is, a balancing pose. 
So I'll just remind you how that works. If you want, you can use a chair or a table in front of you to come down and hold and come back onto it. So for that, we can inhale both arms up and then imagine the body in a straight line as we come down into warrior three and then back out of it. So we'll do that three times in the uh, Drew yoga tradition of going in and out of things three times. So inhale and then when you're ready, just sorting your breathing for yourself, whatever feels right for you. And the last one. Okay. And we can do the same on the other side. So, starting with our good stable base. And it's warrior one. So again, deciding what you want to do with the back leg, the back foot, and then inhaling both arms up, looking slightly upwards, finding your own drishti point, and enjoying that stretch of the fingers up towards the ceiling. down into warrior two so adjusting that foot if you need to checking the back arm finding the drishti point that fingernail of the middle finger and feeling the power the stability the strength by grounding yourself through the feet into the earth And let's move on into Reverse Warrior. So palm towards the ceiling and tilting the spine till the palms facing behind us. And again, enjoying that nice stretch. that ready for our warrior three so coming into mountain pose stretching up through the crown of the head <coughs> and then bringing the arms up in a straight line with the spine and then arms spine and left leg come back as we come into a superman pose and then up again and again the second time coming into warrior three and out again and the last one Okay, so that then brings us to triangle and again we can do it in three little dips or if you like you can hold the pose. So 
Hold. Uh, you'll hold, okay. So, remember that the uh, distance between the feet in triangle is about two thirds of the distance that you would use in the warrior poses. So they're quite a bit closer together. The left hand goes to the inside of the left thigh, the right hand stretches up towards the ceiling and you only go as far into the dip as feels right for you. So inhale and then exhale into the dip. And inhale back up again. And twice more. And remember also that we want to keep that top shoulder back as we go down. It's, it's not important how far down you go. What's important is that you're feeling a nice stretch and you're enjoying moving in and out of the pose. So, again, um, either looking up at the ceiling or looking straight ahead of you, or even down at the floor, wherever feels best. Inhale and then exhale. Okay, from here then we go into side angle. So for side angle, we'll go back and do the left first, the left leg, back into the same kind of distance as we used for the warrior poses. And we can rest the left elbow on the left knee and bring the right arm around in a nice line with the right side of the chest and the back leg. If you want to make it a bit tougher, you can straighten that left arm, taking it off the knee for four or five breaths. And then coming back up to do the same on the other side. And again, going up and out of that. And then from here, we can go into downward facing dog. So for that, we just come down and walk the hands forward. And just spend a moment in downward facing dog, stretching the spine out, pushing out through the fingers, relaxing the heels towards the mat. And they don't have to reach the mat, remember. And just feeling that, remembering that we're getting that extra flow of blood to the brain in this pose. And then we swing through into gate pose. So we bring the right knee down and we leave the left leg straightened out. Put the hand on the outside of the left leg and bring the right arm round and then from there we go into semicircle so we just sweep the arms round and back and just once more into gate and once more into semicircle. And then we can do the same on the other side. 
So, starting with gate, into semicircle, into gate, into semicircle, and last one. Okay, so from that then we go into the various plank moves. Now let's look at the different versions of plank that we can do. So firstly there's the full plank and we can drop down to the knees and the further the knees are back the more work is on the arms and shoulders and core. The closer the knees are to the hands, the easier it is on arms, shoulders and core. So decide which you want and we'll just do four or five breaths. Okay, so from there and we want the head, neck, torso and legs in a nice straight line. So check that you've not got your bottom up in the air to be fairly straight. And then we can come out of that and go into elbows plank. So for elbows plank the same rule applies. We can be on our knees and we can adjust the distance of our knees from our elbows to make it tougher or harder. So again we'll do four or five breaths. Okay, and if you're noticing a bit of a tremor or a tremble in these, that's okay, that's a good sign. It means that the muscles are strengthening, that they're working. As long as it's not, you're not putting too much pressure on them. Always be aware of how you feel, especially after coming out of the pose. Do I feel better for that? Do I feel that I've done a good thing for the body? And if you feel you want to just take a break for a moment, a great pose to recover in is extended child or child pose. Okay, moving on, we have the one-legged plank. So again, you can just raise one leg with one knee on the floor, or you can go into full plank and raise the other leg again for four or five breaths. And then swapping over and the other leg for four or five breaths. Okay, and that then brings us to our side plank. So side plank, I'll show you basically the full side plank. So I like to get the feet in line, one behind the other, and then aim for a nice straight spine and looking up towards the ceiling with one arm stretching up. The other alternative is to bring one knee onto the floor and 
do it that way. Do check in with yourself how you're feeling and decide sensibly which is the best for you. Okay, so four or five breaths in your version of side plank, whichever feels right. And then coming out, ready to do the same on the other side. and steadily and then maybe just taking a moment to check in with yourself again an extended child or child pose and if you're in child just relaxing the shoulders down focusing on how your spine feels how your shoulders feel because you've been working the arms quite strongly there how the core, how the abdomen feels and you might want to stay in child or you might want to <coughs> give the core a little bit more work in boat pose so if you're doing boat pose from a sitting position you can lean back onto your hands and bring your legs up at an angle or you can bring the arms up as well and again four or five breaths And then coming out of that nice and gently and for the next one we start off in staff pose I'll show you it first and this is one of your favorites Anne isn't it I don't where we swing it. through swing through the tabletop <laughs> where we come up and back down again we'll just do three times okay so Inhaling up and exhaling down. Inhale up and exhale down. And the last one. Okay. And then from there we can go into bow. So for bow we're lying face down and the other options for bow bow is the one where we take hold of the feet and then pull the top half of our body up off the mat um, we can do frog where we take one foot and pull it back getting a nice stretch into the thigh and then the other foot and pull it back getting a nice stretch into the thigh half frog that is and then we can just lie on the mat and bring both heels back frog pose or we can go into bow so again it's going to be four or five breaths And one last breath and relaxing out of that and coming onto our back for 
the uh, court work sequence that we usually do. So for this we've got the options of lifting the tailbone while we press the small of the back down into the mat, pulling in the pelvic floor, strengthening the pelvic floor, holding it for a count of 10, and relaxing for a count of 10, and alternating. Or we can alternately raise and lower a leg, inhale and point with your foot, exhale and flex the foot, we can do both feet at the same time. We can do that lovely movement, I really like this one, where we exhale, hug the knees to the chest, and the inhale, bringing the arms out to the side and the legs up at 60 degrees. Exhale, hugging the knees to the chest again. It's an exercise from the Kundalini Yoga, now be Kriya. And then the last option is knees up in the air, Cards parallel with the floor, hands behind the head, and we do 10 elbows to the opposite knee. So starting now, inhale, and then exhale as you stretch forward your right leg and bring your right elbow to the left knee, and inhale back. Exhale, stretching out the left leg and bringing the left elbow to the right knee, and inhale back. And then another nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And the last one. And then we relax the feet down on the floor. And we decided we want to take a rest. So check in with yourself. Be aware of how your body feels. Before deciding whether you want to do another 10 of one of those. Maybe change which exercise you were doing. Or maybe do the same again a little bit faster. So I'm going to do what I just did. Another 10, going a little bit faster. Inhale, exhale, stretching out the right leg and the right elbow to the left knee. Inhale back, exhale, left elbow to the right knee. Inhale back, and then another nine. And eight. And seven. Six. Five, four, three, two, and the last one. And then both feet up to the vertical, arms at 45 degrees, head and shoulders up. Bring the legs forward 30 degrees for five, four, three, Two, one, another 30 degrees, five, four, three, two, one, a couple of inches off the floor, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Just let go, breathing deeply into the abdomen, maybe bringing the soles of the feet together, letting the knees fall out to the side, maybe doing that same pose against a wall but focusing deeply, deep breaths into the abdomen, diaphragmatic breathing. Really being aware of the abdomen filling, filling completely as you inhale and then 
emptying completely as you exhale and pull the stomach in towards the spine. Okay, so we have been doing quite a bit of work on the spine. Before we go into our final relaxation, you may want to just come up into a sitting position. You may want to stay lying down, and that's great. But you might want to just do a few spinal twists, just bringing the right hand to the left knee, looking behind you, inhaling back to the front. Left hand to right knee, exhaling to look behind you. And just twice more, those spinal twists. And then coming into your most relaxing supine pose. So it may be that you want your legs back up against the wall. It may be that you want your feet out by the edge of the mat and just balancing the knees against each other. That makes a nice relaxation for the muscles running down to the thighs. Just lets them relax like hammocks. Or the one that I always find the most relaxing, corpse pose, feet falling out to the side, palms out by the side. Closing the eyes gently and focusing on the breath. And then just observing yourself. When I said focus on the breath, where did your mind go? Was it to the nostrils? The air coming in through the nostrils? Was it the rise and fall of the chest? Was it the rise and fall of the abdomen? And then it's a while since we did the golden oil meditation, I think. So and just imagine on the next inhale that you notice a beautiful fragrance. Your favorite herbal oil fragrance. Which is that fragrance? Imagine someone coming with a glass jug full of a warm golden herbal oil. Imagine them pouring this warm golden oil gently over your bare feet. Feel the warmth soak into the feet, relaxing the muscles, spreading a golden glow between the bones of the feet through all the little joints. Releasing any tendon and ligament pressures. And perhaps we can visualize a beautiful golden glow, a healthy, vital golden glow in the feet. A golden relaxing glow that spreads up into the ankles and the calves. Into the knees. And the thighs into the hips and the abdomen relaxing and releasing any tensions in the abdomen in the digestive system and any of the vital organs in the abdomen 
replacing them with a beautiful, healthy, vital, golden glow. Letting that golden glow spread up the spine and into the thorac thoracic cavity, a heart and lungs, the chest muscles, and then flowing into the shoulders and down the arms. Can you notice a tingle in the fingers? Tingle of life energy, a glow of life energy. Call it prana, call it chi. Feel the golden glow relax your neck and throat. your jaw and cheeks, the muscles around the eyes, the eyelids, the eyebrows, the forehead and the scalp. maybe filling the mind with that beautiful golden glow and in this relaxed state you may like to recite the mantra internally for the solar plexus chakra it's Ram R-A-M only the A is drawn out as in farmer, Ram, Ram, Ram. may want to enjoy the benefits of that deep relaxation and hold on to it for a while and that's really good or you may have other things you need to be getting on with in which case remember to come out nice and gently so that might involve rubbing the palms together till they're warm and then cupping the palms over your eyes, letting the warmth soak into the eyes before opening the eyes into the darkness provided by the hands and slowly withdrawing the hands, letting the light in gently, wiggling fingers and toes, rotating the hands toward the wrists and the same for the feet and the ankles, maybe stretching a bit of Supine banana asana. Enjoying that stretch again, the way animals enjoy their stretches. And then rolling over onto your right side, bringing the knees up. Resting your head for a few moments on your forearm with your left hand in front of your chest. And when you're ready, using that left hand to push yourself up into a sitting position, ready to continue with your day. So thank you all very much for joining us in this session. The golden Manipura or solar plexus chakra that we've been focusing on just behind the navel is responsible for our willpower our determination to get things done 
and we want a nice balanced solar plexus chakra. If it's too strong, we can be arrogant and bossy. If it's too weak, then we might become a bit weak-willed and shilly-shally. So we want a nice balanced um, Manipura chakra. So I hope you enjoy that. Hope you're feeling really livened up by it. You might want a good rest. There were some challenging poses in that. Thank you very much and well done on completing it. Have a great day and Namaste.